everybody. I am Lieutenant Wagner with the Westchester Fire Department and today I'm going to show you the Butler County Technical Rescue Truck. This truck is managed by both the Butler County EMA and the Butler County Fire Chiefs. This is a 2005 International Cab that pulls roughly a 45 foot Hackney uh, specialized trailer for our equipment. So we'll get right to it and I'll show you some of the things. First of all, down in here, this is kind of a utility compartment so the driver of the truck actually has everything they need to drive safely. And we also have an air compressor inside here if needed. Uh, that will run some of our tools. So we'll go ahead, you can draw attention that we have lighting on the sides. We actually have lighting on the roof that pops up into the air. And it's kind of like a street light and this will help our uh, workers see while they're doing their job. So our first compartment here, this is primarily for communications equipment. Uh, we have radios, computers, and we do have some of our air monitoring equipment in here as well. Uh, you can see some of the monitors up here, and we have some things on charge, and we have lights, etc., for our crews to take out into the field so that they can do the job that they're called to do. We do do multi-discipline, which is anything in the technical rescue, which could be a rope rescue. This could be somebody stuck in a ditch, maybe out in the woods because they had an accident, uh, a house collapse or a building collapse of some sort. So we have very specialized tools. This compartment here is mostly our airlines and for our search guys. These guys have the ability to see into some areas that are very difficult to see. Uh, this is mostly storage for our breathing equipment when they have to go down into these spaces. It's very important that they have communications in air and these are part of that program. We'll step back a little bit further and what we have here is a mix of things but primarily this is going to be our rope rescue stuff. We have harnesses again to keep our guys safe, ropes, and all the associated equipment so that they can go up to elevated heights or below grade to do some rescues. As we continue on, we have more of the same uh, breathing equipment in here. And again, we can't send our guys into any location without making sure they have good air. And the equipment in this compartment will provide that. And we're gonna move further on back this equipment that you see here, they're called shores. And basically if we put them up, they're gonna look like a bunch of stilts. And what this does is if we have a building that has collapsed or something's hit it, we'll use a lot of this equipment to make the building solid so we can get people in or out of it if we have to see how bad a shape it's in. So I'm gonna step on over here So we have a lot of various equipment in here. A lot of the things we do requires us to cut wood to make shores as well as what we have over there. And we have things for that. Of course, we have to have water. We carry quite a bit of water because our workers get really thirsty and we don't want them to dehydrate. And we have generator and we also have dewatering equipment if we got to pump water out of a flooded area. So at this point, I'm going to go around to the other side of the truck and I'll show you what's over there. Although I don't have it opened up, this is our wood storage area. And this just has a variety of wood stuck in here so that when the guys get on scene and they do have to start constructing things to make it safe for them to enter, they would get the starter wood out of here and of course we would have more wood delivered as needed. So as we get over here again, we have specialized equipment. I have a lot of cribbing. Cribbing is just big sets of wood blocks, but we can use that to provide ourselves some security from things falling on us. We don't want walls shifting or anything like that. Or if we have to lift something up in the air that's really heavy to get somebody out, we would put cribbing up underneath. We'd build a big block to provide some security. And we have tools down here for concrete cutting. Uh, these tools are very involved. They take a lot of work, 
but they cut concrete really fast and they use a diamond blade. And of course, we also have an air compressor to help power some of our other tools. In a situation like this, water is very, very important and we would have a, one of the fire departments provide us water because we have to have that water to cut concrete. So again, we continue with our variety of equipment. Uh, I have gases if they have to use some sort of cutting torch. We have hand tools, because no matter how much we have, we always have to end up doing things by hand, at least for something that's tight, because we don't want to hurt anybody that could possibly be inside. So at that point, we quit using the powered machinery and we go to using hand tools. And again, that's a variety of what we have here. And this is just a continuation. We have more hand tools, more tools that will help us in lifting or moving heavy items, get it out of our way. And you can see some more of our equipment. We have wood cutting saws, we have concrete cutting saws, uh, multiple blades that we keep in here for some of our tools. And of course, we also sometimes have the jaws of life that we'll put to work and we carry our own set with us. And here we have a lot of fuel and extra garden hoses for those tools that I was telling you about. And then when we get over here, this is mostly electrical equipment because we have to have lights. A lot of times the jobs that we do with this truck take many hours to complete a rescue. Uh, we have to plan ahead of time, get lights set out as it's starting to get dark. We want to make sure our workers are safe, that they can see and that we can see them to make sure nobody's getting hurt. Okay, well that pretty much concludes our tour. I hope, thank you for stopping by here and uh, seeing our truck. Remember to wear your seat belts and please make sure your parents are wearing their seat belts as well. And again, if you see flashing red lights, please pull over to the right so that we can get by in a safe manner. Thank you.